Attribution is one of the most confusing things to truly understand. So in today's video, I wanna break down exactly what attribution is and also why it's limiting your results in terms of scaling your e-commerce business. So I think a lot of marketers actually blow attribution up to be this crazy thing that it's actually not and use it as a way to show better performance than what they're actually delivering to the clients. Also, if you don't know who I am, my name is Rasmus and I'm the owner of Minix and we specialize in helping e-commerce brands scale through paid advertising and user-generated content a performance-based approach. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first off, we just have to understand, you know, what it even is attribution and why is it important? So in the world of advertising, attribution is basically just a way of measuring the impact or the performance of a specific channel or platform on a, any given action, usually a sale, right? So in layman's terms, that will basically just mean it's a way of measuring how good is your Facebook ads at generating you sales or Google ads or TikTok ads or Snapchat ads, you name it. That's attribution. So the first thing you have to understand is this various ways of actually modeling your attribution. So you have something called first click, you have last click, you have linear, you have data driven. You have a lot of different ways of actually modeling your attribution to whatever story you really wanna tell. And not only that, but you also have a time delay in which you allow each platform to basically take credit for the purchase that they might have generated. So usually that will be one day, seven day or 28 day click attribution window or a view attribution. So essentially, if we wanna boil attribution down to its core, it's a way of using data to model the customer journey and also determine which channels played a role in a specific conversion, right, a sale. So in today's world, you have a lot of different ways of attributing purchases. You have the Facebook Pixel, you have Google Analytics, you have Snapchat, you have the TikTok Pixel. There's a lot of different ways to actually measure the performance you're getting from individual channels, right? And that matters more than you might think because these guys, these companies, they don't talk to each other, but I'll get into that a little bit later. So why do we use attribution? Well, attribution is a way to provide clarity on the performance of different channels and understand the impact that each platform has. So in the past, in a couple of years ago, attribution was mainly based on what we call in-platform data. So that would be whatever you could see inside the Facebook ads dashboard or whatever you could see inside the Snapchat ads dashboard, which only considered the role of that single platform. As said, these guys don't talk to each other, right? However, in 2023 now, we have a lot of third-party attribution and tracking tools that allows us to pool all this data together from these different platforms. And these tools then use algorithms to then attribute conversions better to each different channel than what each channel would be able to do on its own. Because if you've been in the ad space for a long time, you know that duplicate purchases was a big thing back in the days uh, when you only had stuff like Google Analytics because you would have one purchase come in and then you would see, you know, one purchase on Google Ads and Facebook Ads and it would be the same conversion value and you would be like, what's going on? I don't understand this. And this actually leads me directly into the next section, which is why is attribution limiting your performance and your ability to scale your company? So the big glaring issue we have with attribution is the very concept and nature of it. Attribution is just modeling data and showing the same story in multiple different ways, depending on how you wanna show what platform was responsible for each individual purchase. Let's take an example and just break it down so hopefully it's easy to understand, right? Let's say you have one purchase worth $100 and the customer journey is very simple. The person clicked a Facebook ad, went off Facebook, clicked the Google ad, and then made the purchase. Well, in this instance, assuming that you know, you're know you using third-party attribution, attribution tool, you have three different outcomes. If you use first click attribution, then you would see one purchase from Facebook worth $100, but zero from Google. If you use last click attribution, then you would see zero purchase from Facebook, but one purchase from Google worth $100. And if you use linear attribution, then you would see two purchases worth $50 each. And that's the whole issue in itself, right? Because now you don't know what purchase you're actually even talking about. But as I said, this is assuming that you're using a third party attribution tool, right? Besides Google Analytics, because Google Analytics is notoriously known for just favoring Google ads purchases than any other platform. But if you don't have a third party tracking tool and you're just relying on in-platform data, then now you have a whole host of other issues because the $100 purchase that you just got in, right? If you're relying on in-platform data, then you would see one purchase on Facebook worth $100 and you would see one purchase on Google worth $100. So now you've made two purchases and made $200 in the day, but your Shopify backend only says you made a hundred bucks. So how do we fix this? And another issue you have with in-platform platform data is the purchases you see in your
your Facebook ads dashboard doesn't differentiate between generating a new customer and an existing customer. So the revenue you're actually generating, you can't really differentiate that and you can't predict what will happen in the future based on that customer you just got in. And even if you're doing prospecting ads on Facebook, you know, assuming that Facebook will only show your ads to people who don't know you, it's still proven that Facebook will still show your ads to people who already shop with you. So you can't really differentiate even your top of funnel or prospecting campaigns. So as you can hopefully see now, attribution in its very nature is designed to not be correct. You simply can't make it be correct because customer journeys are too advanced. And if I click the Facebook ads and I click the Google ad, then how would you know which platform to even give the purchase credit to, right? It's a question that really can't be answered. So it's an impossible task to get correct. So then the obvious question then becomes, what do you do? right? You can't trust attribution. So what do you do? Well, for starters, the main reason why you're probably relying on attribution, right? Is because you're looking at ROAS and you need to stop with that. Businesses are not built on ROAS. A better metric for you to be looking at as a business owner is to be looking at your NCPA, your new customer acquisition cost, which is basically how much do you pay to acquire a new customer in your business? And potentially if you want to then look at new customer return on ad spend. So the only thing NCPA really takes into account is, you know, how much did you spend on all the ad platforms and then how many new customers did you generate? If you divide those two numbers out with each other, you'll then get your NCPA. And then if you include revenue generated from the new customers, then you'll get your new customer ROAS. But the reason why it's better to look at stuff like NCPA and how many new customers you generated is because this is something you can scale. You can't scale on ROAS because it doesn't show you predictable revenue. It's not something you can actually work with, but you can work with NCPA and how many new customers you actually got in the door. So once you start making that shift over to NCPA, what you can look at is now you can start looking at lifetime value of each individual customer, and that will give you an insight into the future revenue you can actually predict to get out of these new customers, right? Do you see where I'm going with this? Now we're actually building a predictive model and we're building a business that we can actually rely on. And having this predictive model where you know, okay, this is what I can pay to acquire a new customer in the business that allows you to manipulate how much you can actually afford to pay for a new customer. Because let me tell you something that not a lot of marketers are talking about. The heavy hitters in this industry, the people that are winning this game, they're winning because they can go break even or they can lose money on acquiring a new customer because they're working in very different ways than you are. And if you think you'll never be able to do that, let me just tell you right now what you need to be looking at in order to play that game that the heavy hitters and industry leaders are playing and you can start worrying about your your return on ad spend that doesn't mean shit anyway. A key metric that they're looking at and obsessing over is what's called time from first to second purchase. See, the reason why you think you cannot afford to go break even or lose a little bit of money on acquiring a new customer is because you have no clue when you'll get that next purchase from that customer and how much the customer will be worth. And this is where tools like Triple Whale, Ecom Track, and North Bean comes into play because these tools will very clearly show you how long on average it takes for each and every one of your customers to come back from their first purchase to make their second purchase. So that's the thing you need to be obsessing over because then what you can do is you can work on taking your time from first to second order and take that rate from three months, for example, down to 30 days. And what that will allow you to have is to have a much better cash flowing business that you can actually rely on. And then you can afford to go break even on acquiring a new customer because you know in 30 days, you'll get $50 more from that customer because you sold them a very specific product and you've optimized your retention marketing, your email and SMS marketing in such a way that you predictably know that 30% of all the new customers you get come back within 30 days because they need another product that you can sell them. And that's how real business is made. But guys, that pretty much sums up today's video. I hope you found some great value in this. To basically sum it up, if it got a little bit confusing, attribution is in its very nature wrong. It's something that just cannot be correct. So it's better for you to look at something like NCPA, lifetime value, and the time from first to second order. If you have any questions about attribution or any of the stuff I just talked about, feel free to leave a question down below in the comment section and I'll be happy to help. Also, if you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot to me. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.